Probability and Statistics Normal Distribution Part 1 This is the first in a set of four videos on this channel dealing with the normal distribution. In this one we are introducing the normal distribution the standard normal distribution and using the Z table to find related probabilities. The bell shaped curve. It's easy enough to construct a distribution. There's the raw scores. That's a set of scores in an examination. There is now put into group data. The selection of the group is up to you. And there's the graph upon which we're going to put those groups. So allocating the points. There's the histogram related to that, and there's the distribution curve, the normal distribution curve. We can increase accuracy by increasing the number of groups. That's now eight groups instead of six. Now we have 13 groups. It's the same set of box each time. Yes, as a matter of interest, the defining equation for the normal distribution curve is there, where mu, the Greek letter mu, represents the mean of the distribution, and the Greek letter lowercase sigma represents the standard deviation. Most of the scores will have a value fairly close to the mean in a normal distribution, thus the bunching towards the center, while a smaller percentage of curve scores will lie further from the mean, reducing in number the further scores are from the mean. Many human characteristics do tend to follow the pattern of the normal distribution, such as height, weight, intelligence test scores, creativity scores, lifespan, and so on, and many different aspects in nature and measurements in industry and medicine and all sorts also correspond to the normal distribution. Many of these scores will be skewed depending upon where we are in the world and what circumstances there are. In the normal distribution, 68% of the values lie within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% between two standard deviations of the mean. So there's one two standard deviations, one two standard deviations, a range of four standard deviations. And 99.7% within three standard deviations of the mean. Now we're going to look at the standard normal distribution as indicated in the formula, which incidentally we'll not be using. The shape of the curve is determined by mu, the mean, and sigma squared, the variance of the scores. Often referred to as the parameters of the normal distribution. So mu and sigma squared, or mu and sigma, are the parameters of the normal distribution. Normal, the standard normal distribution, mean 0, standard deviation 1, and then any other standard deviations are related back to this one. And this is represented by N01. We have standard normal distribution tables, the Z table, to calculate the probabilities of any other normal distribution. So the Z table gives the 
probabilities related to the standard normal distribution and then we work from there. It can vary in shape. Right, some facts, some important facts about the standard normal probabilities. The probability of a continuous variable corresponds to the area under the curve. So the probability is the area under the curve, bounded, for example, by x equals a and x equals b. What this means is that the probability of a score lying between a and b is indicated by the area under the normal distribution curve. We cannot describe the probability for a single point, particularly as points do not carry space, and therefore there is no area for a point. So therefore it's between two values for an interval where a is not equal to b because obviously they will be coming back to the point. The probability of x equals a is zero with no area. And the probability between A and B, and then between A and B inclusive, are equal. And in fact, if it's equal to B alone, and if it's equal to A alone. Those are all equal probabilities. The area under the standard normal distribution curve is 1. So we use the variable z, uppercase z, to denote the distribution rather than x. And so there we are, the standard normal distribution. Probabilities for the standard normal distribution are calculated and given in the standard normal table. There's the normal table there. So we'd be able to say, well, for a z score of 0, 0, 1, there is the probability of that occurring. And it denotes the area under the curve for the values of z between 0 and that value of z. So it's always these tables give from 0 to that value. So the area from 0 to 0, the area from 0 to 0, 9, the area from 1 from 0 to 1 comma 0 9, 0 comma 1 9, 0 comma from 0 to 0 comma 1 9. So that's the area from 0 always from 0 to 0 comma 1 9. So z uppercase represents the variable, and the small letter represents the actual value of z under consideration. And as indicated before, the area given in the table starts from z equals 0 to z equals whatever that little z is. And we only work with positive values, but we work with the symmetry of the table to get the negative values. So there is the z table. Let's do an example. Finding the probability that the z-score lies between 0 and 0, 0,78. So there's the area we want, from 0 to 0, 0,78. So, what we do is we say 0, 0,78, so 0, 0,7 and then the column 8. So 0, 7 and across to the column 8. There it is there. That's what we're going to look for. And the probability there is given as 0 0.28230. So therefore that's the probability that Z lies between 0 and 0, 0,78.
Let's have a look at the probability from 0, 0,93 to 1,25. Remember once again, the table gives the probabilities from 0, not between two values. So there's the shaded region we want. So, there is section B, the blue section, section A, the red section, and those are the two areas that the Z table can give us. The gray area we're looking for is the area A minus the area B, the area between 0 and 1.25 minus the area between 0 and 0.93. So notice 0 to 1.25, 0 to 1.93, subtract. So there's the one from 0 to 1.25, 1.2, column 5, there it is. 0.93, so 0.9, and across to column 3, and we can get our probability there, and there's our final probability for lying between those two values. Probability that Z is less than 1.14. And that means this. There we are, all the way from there, forever that way. So, we have area A and we have area B. Z is less than 0. Think about it. The area under the whole curve is 1. So, therefore, the area of section A has to be 0, 0,5. Yeah, 0.5 being half of the 1. And this we can get from the table 1.1. There's the probability Z is less than 1.14. Now remember if it said Z less than or equal to 1.14, we'd still have the same answer. Z greater than 1.04. So there's the area we want there. Now the Z table doesn't give that. It gives areas from 0 to the values. So what we do is we get to think, well, what's that whole area? 0, 0,5, and we get to subtract that one. 0, 0,5, subtract this area up to 1, 0, 4. That comes from the table, 1.04, and there is our probability that Z is greater than 1.04. Having a look at probability involving negative values of Z. The curve is symmetrical about the line Z, Z equals 0, so to calculate negative values, same as calculating positive values. Let's have a look at these diagrams. Those areas are equal. So Z less than negative A, if we asked to find the, the probability of Z less than negative A, we found the probability of Z greater than A. So the probability of negative A to zero is the same as the probability of A to zero. And the probability between two negative Value is the same as the symmetrical probability between two positive values. And if we had to find the value for negative greater than z greater than negative a, we can say, well, it's the same as the probability of z less than a. So we have to find between a negative value and a positive value. There we are there. So we know that value easily. This we can just translate to the other side. We need to split the area. 
So there we have it, from negative 1.2 to naught, and from naught to 0.95, and then obviously this we have to convert to the positive. So this is the same as looking at 1.2 on the z-table.